The famous blue marble photo was taken on December 7, 1972, during NASA's Apollo 17 mission. It's known as the first full disk image of Earth in human history, providing one of the clearest views of our planet as a whole. But there's something strange about this photo, isn't there? It looks upside down. In reality, the Apollo 17 astronauts saw Earth from this angle in space, with the South Pole at the top and the North Pole at the bottom. Since space has no up or down, calling this image upside down doesn't actually make sense. So, why are we used to seeing Earth this way? And not this way? Even though space doesn't dictate directions, we've adopted north and south as two opposing directions, always placing north at the top of our maps. Why is that? In ancient Egypt, south was seen as the top because the Nile River flows from south to north. They even referred to the southern part of the country as Upper Egypt and the northern part as Lower Egypt. And there are countless historical maps from the Middle Ages where the north was actually placed at the bottom. So, why do we now almost universally place the north at the top? There are two main reasons for this. Reason one, the European perspective. As European explorers and map makers spread their knowledge of the world, they tended to place their own continent at the top. Over time, this became a standard in cartography. Reason two, the magnetic compass. With the compass pointing toward magnetic north, this direction became associated with the top of the map. Therefore, having north at the top of the map has historical and practical foundations. But this convention can also limit our perspective. What if we challenged ourselves and looked at the world the other way around, with north on the bottom? From this alternative perspective, the world looks quite different. The first thing we notice is how unevenly the continents are distributed. The southern hemisphere is dominated by oceans, while land masses concentrate in the north. It almost feels like all the continents are clumped together up there. This map also emphasizes that water covers about 75% of Earth's surface. Australia and South America stand out in the vast oceanic spaces while the rest of the continents seem densely packed together. It's striking to see how small and secluded Europe and North America, the so-called civilized world, actually are on the globe. Europe isn't a separate continent, but rather a peninsula extending from Asia, a small projection at the edge of a larger landmass. In contrast, the Asian continent spreads out, spanning the Earth like a giant bridge from west to east. Africa, resembling a larger reflection of South America, hangs like a bead connected to Asia, giving it a unique placement on this inverted view. This orientation allows us to strip away political borders and see the world as it is. Simply geographical. It offers a fresh perspective, free from conventional ideas. Take Europe, for example. It's really just a port on the oceanic edge of Asia, Notice the striking color difference between Europe, surrounded by the Mediterranean, and Africa. It's surprising how two regions so close to each other can appear so dramatically separated. And the Mediterranean and Aegean seas, from Spain to Anatolia, an unbroken coastline of islands, peninsulas, inlets, and bays. This unique landscape is the crossroads of Asia and Africa, and serves as Asia's gateway to the seas highlighting its significance in an entirely new way. See how Anatolia and Iran mirror Scandinavia, and how England resembles Italy, the Arabian Peninsula's separation from Africa by the Red Sea, India as a massive landmass colliding with Asia, and Indonesia acting as a natural barrier that divides Asia from the vast ocean beyond. All of these details stand out so much more clearly Looking at Earth this way makes us question the boundaries and perspectives we take for granted, giving us a new lens to explore and appreciate our planet. It's a fresh, unbiased perspective that invites us to see Earth in an entirely new light.